So I've been wanting to review a muscle car for a while now, but I was faced with two issues. The first being I know precious little about them, and the second being the sheer vastness of choice. So the producer of Autoborn magazine, uh, uh, that, that, that's me, stuffed my pocket with £20,000 and told me to go buy whatever I can afford from the auction house. And this is what I came out with. The 2002 Chevy Corvette Z06. Oh yes, feel the speed and power of a brute behemoth V8 inspired hunk of American muscle. <laughs> the impracticalities, the adolescence of youth is at my very fingertips now. So the Z06 certainly sounds racetrack ready. The regular Corvette's friendly burble is largely absent from this model's lightweight titanium tailpipes. In its place is a raw, slightly frenetic V8 noise. Blipping the throttle once ends most street challenges, at least from savvy drivers who may not have seen the 405 horsepower Fender badges, but recognize the evil vocals of a tightly wound small block. Now, as a Londoner, I've been programmed and hardwired to believe that muscle cars are for oversized Americans and have no purpose on our streets over here. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. You see, we have this habit over here where we assume that if a car fails to adapt to our narrow, congestive and in some places cobble paved roads, well then, it's rubbish. But turning the argument on its head, what if this is actually a good car? What if it's us who just have terrible driving conditions that are not very welcoming to cars from different walks of life? I feel like I'm having an epiphany moment because driving this car, there's very little wrong with it. It's actually brilliant. The back end is light and the rear wheels spin up like a cartoon character about to set off in chase. Go on, go catch the Wiley Coyote. Ooh, get in the back end out, get in the rear end out nicely, in the pouring rain. Oh, the rain has come amongst us, hopefully we won't end up in a hedge somewhere. Oh goodness. Ooh. Nothing but wheel spin, shredding those tyres and bucking the vet like a Bronco. Oh yes! Now, no Corvette review would be complete without mentioning its standard active handling stability control system, which significantly raises the car's hard driving usability. This electronic safety net can make the difference between a simple pulse elevating slide and an expensive, unwelcome call to the flatbed operator. And if you want to maximize handling, the setup can be deactivated. So, it's a case of tomato tomato. Choice for all, depending on the type of driver you are. Stylistically, one of the things I admire most about the VET is that like all muscle cars before it, the design choices follow traditional American hallmarks. Simple lines and contours with a boxy outline. But to further enhance the Z06 and make it look more modern, Chevrolet have added some much needed curves to the body. This was a good idea. The front of the car is also something that drew my attention. That nose looks poised and focused, low to the ground for improved downforce resulting in better cornering performance as you saw from my initial test drive. This more than likely explains why I'm able to speak about this here in the comfort of the studio rather than from a hospital bed somewhere in Harlem. On the inside, things begin to go downhill. Oh dear. With all that value for money in the looks and performance, there had to be a trade-off somewhere, and I think I found it. Drab, dull, dreary, and plastic. Apart from there being some good legroom, it's a pretty poor effort. But regardless, before we head back out, let's hear what a true 
all-American 400 brake horsepower plus V8 really sounds like. then so this is where all american muscle cars feel at home the drag strip so let's put that v8 to the test and off we go first gear and oh my goodness second what's wrong with second gear it's got lost third gear now at just 2000 rpm torque easily overwhelms available traction and makes me wish for drag slicks with just the right amount of clutch and throttle feathering the z06 will fire off four second runs to 60 all day long no problem non-debatable and will consistently hit 100 miles per hour in less than 9.5 seconds and here we go trying to hit six gear 171.24 171.24 very good indeed and finally the short burst acceleration test okay get ready and are we first gear oh my goodness second gear went AWOL again very strange indeed but we still continue third gear 80 87.46 87.46 so let's be honest the interior is rubbish the dashboard is rubbish the use of cheap plastics is rubbish the seats are also rubbish with that being said there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that you should yes should buy this car slightly mad hear me out as i mentioned during the testing i went into this with very low expectations i expected the z06 to be a disaster on wheels i expected it to send me straight into the wall when i attempted to turn the wheel i even expected the v8 in this thing to be somewhat low-key and flatter to deceive instead what i got was a grippy when required and slippery when desired tell happy full-on performance monster with the looks of a rock star and the noise of a chainsaw cutting through steel i had such a fun time driving the vet and you will too especially at that twenty thousand pound price but there's a bigger message here and as an englishman i feel it's my duty to ensure relations with our cousins across the atlantic stay of a loving nature with a bit of compromise and a bit of understanding i now see that for the most part the american muscle cars have always been pretty damn good we just haven't got the correct roads over here so with that being said from the united kingdom sincerest apologies america and thank you